Hi friends, it's Grace and welcome back to another video. A few things have changed since the last time I saw you. One of them is unfortunately the camera angle. Um, my cat, Maisie, chewed through the power cable for my other ring light. So I'm using one where the camera isn't quite as high. It doesn't go quite as high. So I'm hoping that this is all in frame. I think that we got it down pat. But the other thing that has changed is that there are three shelves behind me now. I'm going to work on a bookshelf tour soon, so I'm hoping to do that. I just need to find the time. But today's video is going to be my first three reviews for uh, the first round of Spiffbo 10. So I'm part of Cassidy's team for this. And the way that Cassidy runs her team is that every single one of us gets 10 books to read and our team as a whole has been assigned 30 books. So since there are six of us, every book gets read twice. And then each one of us, our responsibility is to pick a semi-finalist for Cassidy to read and then she will choose our team's finalist. So the nice thing about the way Cassidy does run her team is that every book gets two chances, and if it's not someone's cup of tea, then it has another chance to be liked by someone else if it's more up their alley, and I really like that she does that. But uh, with that being said, that of course means that I have 10 books to read, and I will, if you're interested in what all of the books are, direct you to a video that I already did outlining what my 10 books are. I'll leave that linked in the description below. However, these are going to be my reviews of the first three that I read, and the way that I've chosen to do this is I started with the longest books first, and I'm working my way from longest to shortest. That just works for me personally because I kind of like to get the longer ones out of the way first in terms of them being more of a time commitment for me, and then as we get closer to the first part of this competition winding down, I have the shorter books left to read instead of the longer ones. So that is how, like, that's sort of the objective way that I've decided what order I'm reading them in. I didn't even, like, pick my favorite first or the one that I was most looking forward to. So um, these all actually came out with pretty good ratings, but just to say going in that I didn't pick them, like, because I thought they were going to be my favorite of the batch. I just started with the longest ones. So the first book that I read was Blood of the Stars, and this was a fantasy book that definitely leans towards high epic fantasy, and it takes place in a world where there are sort of two divisions of this world. One part of the world worships the sun as a god, and one part of the world worships the stars as um, a god slash like pantheon. And our main characters in this book are a girl named Aliana, and our other main character is a uh, like a man, boy, I guess. They're both sort of like in their late teens, early 20s. So um, Prince Garen is our other main character. And Aliana was kidnapped from her family at a young age and taken by these people who wanted to use her for her blood because she has a high concentration of magic in her blood and she's sort of been brought up um, not being so horribly mistreated but definitely being mistreated and manipulated by these two people that kidnapped her and have sort of raised her but not in a way that you would call being like kind to her. So she has had a little bit of a rough upbringing ever since she was a younger child. And then Prince Garen was um, acquainted with Eliana when he went to do sort of like a placement when he was younger for a year and he met her and they formed like a friendship and he sort of always blamed himself for being around when she got kidnapped and not being able to protect her and that's something that he still holds on to all these years later but he does not know what happened to her and both of their storylines from the start of the book kind of um eventually end up intertwining and I I quite enjoyed this one actually. So I will go through my scores. Um, Blood of the Stars ended up getting a 7.00 right on so that would be three and a half stars and I remember feeling that the beginning of this book I wasn't really sure how I was feeling. I was interested and then parts of it dragged for me 
but I still found it to be like doing things well. The world building was interesting, the magic was interesting, and uh, I felt that it kind of redeemed itself with what I thought was a very strong climax and ending. Um, like I enjoyed once we got past maybe the 60% mark, where the plot was going and how everything was ramping up and culminating and there are still some like questions that we got answers to but there are still some mysteries that didn't get resolved during this first book that I think uh, were just nicely left as threads for future books where you're satisfied enough with what you got in this book but uh, the author left some stuff there for you to be wanting to pick up the next one. So the categories for the ratings are characters, plot, world building, writing, and enjoyment. So the characters, I gave a 7.5. Um, like I said, I wasn't entirely sure of my feelings at the start of the book. So this is why like a 7.5 kind of reflects that Eventually, I thought that a lot of the characterization was done really well, and by the end of the book, I was invested in the characters, and so there was that um, positive thing of the fact that like my investment continued to increase throughout the book, but I did have a chunk at the beginning of the book where I really wasn't too invested, which is kind of why I arrived at that 7.5. Um, the plot I gave a 7 because, once again, I had a part where I don't want to say it was boring, but I had a part where the book was dragging for me. But then, like I mentioned, I found the end of the book to be quite strong. I really was engaged and I really, really enjoyed reading that final part. And so looking backwards, I can appreciate how that plot um, was being like unfurled for the entire book, uh, even though I was like maybe getting distracted and not finding the pacing to be quite to my liking earlier on. That was all still part of the plot and that was like necessary information and or like character actions. So it all worked together in the end. World building I also gave a 7.5 because I really enjoyed this whole concept kind of of the religion involving sun and involving stars and there is a whole magic system tied into this where the magic system is very intricately tied in with the stars like the stars can grant magic to like I guess mortals or humans and then when um like a, a magic user kind of proves themselves, they get something called a star lock, which is sort of like a focus for your power. And when a magic user dies, their power returns to the stars. And there's kind of a whole like religious ideology um, going on in the book that has to do with the stars. And so I found that to be really interesting. I liked that part of it. Um, and I also thought that it was pretty well done about the different factions that were at play in the plot, like the factions that were opposing each other. The one thing that I found to be a little bit lacking was any explanation of politics, but we didn't really have a character in that position to know that information or to give that information to us. So I kind of excuse it in that sense, but sometimes there was discussions of like leadership decisions but there was nothing really extra like information being given to us to understand like what the political situation was in the world so um sometimes it was kind of like filling in the gaps with information that you didn't really have um but that was okay that was not the focus of the book for world building so that wasn't too bad um, writing, I gave a seven. Uh, honestly, I thought that the writing was just solid. I, I don't have too much to say about it. I didn't think that it was like stellar and over the top, but I thought it was good and I didn't have any complaints about it. And then for enjoyment, I gave the book a 6.5, which is how we arrived at that even seven. And like I said, I really enjoyed the end, but the fact that for a large portion of the beginning and middle, I was a little bit less engaged, just lowered that rating a little bit, but I still appreciate what the book did in other areas. And I ended up like liking it by the end and thinking that it was very solid. So this is the type of book where I don't really know quite how to categorize it, but if you think it sounds interesting, like to me, this has a high potential for people to like it. Um, and I think that it just depends on whether 
you are going to be really, really into what's happening near the beginning and then all the way through because definitely would be more like a five star if you are because I was really into it by the end and I think if you were more into it at the beginning then you would probably be loving it even more than I did at the end. So definitely recommend this one and it was a solid book to start on, nice 3.5 star and I would definitely give props to this author just for a solid book. The second book that I read was The Black Crown by John A. Douglas, and this is a book that, I said this in my brief Goodreads review as well, that was a little bit out of my comfort zone. Um, it definitely is a solid like high fantasy book, so in that sense it's within my comfort zone, but the reason that this was a little bit different for me, something new, was because our main character is half orc and this deals with um, a society that has existed the way that it has for around 18 years after this massive conflict called the orc wars or at least called the orc wars by like the humans the elves etc and so the, the the crown pantheon i think is what it was called is essentially like an ally an allied group of nations that includes like the elves and the halflings and the humans and dwarves maybe um i forget exactly but the crown pantheon was essentially trying to exterminate orcs from the face of the earth like commit genocide um because of the ugly reputation that orcs have um orcs are definitely extremely discriminated against in this world However, one of the main turning points of the war was the fact that the princess and or queen at that time of the human kingdom was kidnapped by the orcs and one of the like half orc half human offspring as a, that happened as a result of the war is who we have as our main character and so he becomes sort of like a prince of the human kingdom that is kept under wraps because humans do not look very kindly on orcs even half orcs and so our main character ragoth kind of grows up in isolation he interacts with his own family and tutors and some other members of court but for the most part he is isolated to a set of apartments in the palace and doesn't really have much experience elsewhere and much life that he has lived up to this point. And he is approaching the time when he should be sworn in as an official member of the royal family. However, something throws those plans out the window because a uh, evil kind of like dark lord type of character arrives and threatens him and threatens that he is not actually meant to ascend to be part of the royal family and Ragoth ends up having to flee to escape from this threat and he kind of ends up like lost because outside of the palace he can't really go anywhere that's not in hiding because the humans do not like orcs and he like has green skin, like he looks like a half orc. So he's in a pretty bad spot, but we accompany him on an adventure to try and go back to his roots and find the orc half of his family and the surviving orcs and where they're living after the orc wars. So I gave this a 7.75 .7 out of 10, which I know is very specific, but that's just what it averaged out to after I gave the scores. And I believe that works out to a 3.875 rating, but I think I gave it, I can't remember whether I gave it a 3.75 or a four. Um, I think that I probably gave it a four just because that kind of specificity deserves to be rounded up. Um, and it, it basically is a four star for all intents and purposes. So for the Black Crown, I gave the characters an eight. Um, I really liked Ragoth. Um, he is sort of like that sheltered, book smart, uh, sweet, like kind character that is sort of thrown into a trial by fire not 
being used to living out in the world, um, has good intentions and slowly discovers that like not everybody does have good intentions and in fact maybe very few people actually do and he gets himself into trouble by being too trusting um, while also simultaneously sometimes being a little bit too reckless and brave. Um, but then we do end up meeting some other characters which include an elf who is part of um, like a religious sect that is sort of like a um, minimalist, like we are here just to help others type of character. And we also end up with a not a centaur. I can't actually remember the name of the creature that one of our other characters was, but she is sort of like a legendary warrior and um, almost sort of like a mother figure in the situation, or at least like halfway between a mother figure and a mentor figure because there's a lot of tough love going on. But I really enjoyed the character dynamics that we got to see. And we also have a human man who is a bit of an asshole and he kind of plays like an older brother role almost, but he's not an antagonist, but he's also sort of like, I don't need you guys, like I'm gonna go off and do my own thing, but he always ends up back with them anyway. <laughs> so I really liked the characters. I really liked the sort of Motley crew, um, like the ragtag group that we follow. Um, and then I also gave the plot an eight. Um, I think that there was a part of the plot where uh, I thought we were going to kind of arrive at a climax sooner, but then I realized that with the way things were going and when we were arriving in a certain place, there was going to be a bit of a pause and we were gonna do other stuff before we got to a final climax. Um, so I wasn't like, I don't know, that pacing threw me off just a little bit. However, up until that point, I was very engaged and finding it very easy to read. And I still did enjoy the like things that happened in that pause that we took, but it did like throw me off the pace a little bit. And then I really enjoyed the end as well. So it was still a four star for me uh, in terms of like how the plot progressed. And uh, I had an inkling about some of the reveals that ended up happening. Like, there was nothing that was supposed to massively throw you off, but there were a few mysteries that I was kind of right about, but there were some things that I didn't see coming, and so I liked that. I thought that that was all well put together. Um, and then that also kind of ties in with the world building, which I also gave an eight, um, because I really liked the way that the different kingdoms and the different peoples and, and species were dealt with. Um, it seemed like the author had really taken the time to think about what it was going to be like in each place that the characters passed through on their journey and each kind of like city and uh, focal point, like each place that was a focal point that we passed through, it had its own character it had a different like makeup of people living there and there was like a reasoning behind that um we had a lot of kind of differing character between the species and the reasoning behind that and we had like um different military prowess and different political prowess for different kingdoms so all of that seemed very well thought out to me okay I got cut off while I was talking about the world building because my phone storage was full. So we probably have a different camera angle again now, my apologies. However, um, I will finish talking about the world building very quickly. The only other thing I was going to say was that the magic was not a massive part of the book, but was well woven in with everything else, I thought. And then the final two categories of writing and enjoyment, I unfortunately actually already talked Talked about these before I realized that the video was not going anymore <laughs> but I think that pretty much the only thing I had to say was that both of these categories got a 7.5 from me because I thought that the writing was pretty solid but um, there were some times where the dialogue felt a little bit stilted to me and some of the description as well but I think that the reason that those stood out were because for the most part, the writing actually did flow very well and made the book very easy to read. So the times when it didn't stood out more. 
Um, and then there was also just one thing about the fact that since our protagonist was a teenage boy, um, there were a couple of times where there was some like sexual content, which is fine by me, but it seems to clash a little bit with the tone of the rest of the book. And it threw me off a little bit because um, I wouldn't say that the rest of the book had like a YA tone, but it did read sort of more like young and a little bit like for some reason I just wasn't expecting it to have sexual content in it so it threw me off a couple of times and sometimes the, the main character just thought a little bit too much like the teenage boy that he was and I didn't love that but overall um, this book was still basically a four star because I really did enjoy it and like I said it was a pleasant surprise because I've never read from an orc main character before. However, um, I really liked it and I would definitely recommend this one if it sounds interesting to you. Now, the third and final book that we have for this first round of reviews is The Oathsworn Legacy by K.R. Ganji. And so this one is a little bit different in terms of format, which I found quite interesting and I liked it. And essentially, The Oathsworn Legacy follows two brothers who are sort of like mercenaries, monster hunters, that type of thing. And the book takes this format where, to me, I would equate it to almost like a TV series where you're following the specific episodes throughout seasons that have to do with a certain storyline and eventually everything comes together with like a big bad that you've been kind of learning about in the background and has become more relevant throughout and to me it was kind of giving like supernatural vibes because at first when we start each section of the book sort of has to deal with um, a job that the brothers are doing and each job is a little bit different but each job has to do do with like hunting a monster or hunting down like a magical artifact that they need to save people from or kind of like uncovering cults or conspiracies and essentially they are being paid to do each job and then each job will end and then we'll move on to the next section of the book but they're not like completely separate from each other. They very much are building on one another because we learn about the brothers' lives and that type of thing builds from each section to the next. And um, we do get to see in the background, there's sort of like, um, like I mentioned, like a big bad that's sort of coalescing that they eventually start making the connections between each job they've been called to do and sometimes a job won't have a direct connection to that but they will meet someone on that job that ends up becoming a friend of theirs and they end up opening a school to teach people how to hunt monsters and to save citizens and i i really enjoyed that setup so like i mentioned throughout the book we eventually work up to things that are more um, like high level and so I don't want to spoil any of that because there's lots to be uncovered but um, I'll just get into my ratings. So this one got a 9 out of 10 from me um, and this is like really easy to talk about because I actually just gave it 9s across the board like every category got the same rating and you know 9 times 5 divided by 5 is 9 so it's a four and a half star. Um, I was super happy with how much I enjoyed this. I really, really loved my time reading it. So um, the characters were like getting a nine from me just because I really liked the way that the brothers interacted with each other. I enjoyed watching that relationship grow. And then there's a lot of other characters, like I mentioned, that they sort of add to their school and add to their group like throughout the book and I just thought that the author did such an amazing job of building the relationships between each person sort of like illustrating how they came onto the scene what their reasons were for staying to work with the brothers and staying to essentially try and do good for the world and they all had different reasons and they all had different roads to get there and they had the type of relationship as a group where they would disagree with one another, but they had like a deeper bond. Um, and so I really enjoyed seeing that. 
And then the plot, I also gave a nine because like I mentioned, I really enjoyed this format. Um, I said that it reminded me of Supernatural, which I loved as a teenager. I haven't watched that show in a long time, but it was definitely a good thing for me that it was giving me those vibes. And then it also in a way reminded me of something like The X-Files where you have a ton of episodes in that show, but there are always going to be episodes that pertain to like what Mulder is trying to uncover in the government, like that type of thing where it's a struggle to try and uncover like this massive like conspiracy and to try and like do things, but you're getting blocked at every turn but persevering anyway. And then eventually the plot kind of breaks open and really gets going. One small criticism that I would have is that at the very end during the climax, I felt like it was really um, a lot all at once. Like I sometimes like there to be a climax where part of it is a little bit quieter instead of being like battles like so explosive like everything happening all at once however i it was still really well written and the entire book as a whole was great in my opinion so i don't really dock too much from that um but yeah that there was just that one thing and then we have world building and part of the reason why the world building in this was so cool was once again because in each section of the book we got to see something different and we often got to see things that had been mentioned before uh, or like magic that had been mentioned before but now it's actually being illustrated because we're seeing it in action we're fighting against it like that type of thing and so the um the world building like it wasn't super detailed in a political sense but it was there in the background and you could see the development of like the kingdom kind of descending into uh, like a dictatorship and like a tyrant king that really wanted to have a stranglehold on everything and like relations with the dwarven kingdom and relations with the elves um, and stuff like that. So I thought the world building was really strong and I was super intrigued by it the whole time. Um, and then writing and enjoyment also got nines. Um, the writing I just thought was really strong. Uh, I really felt those emotional connections between characters and I uh, felt like I understood what was going on in battle scenes, which is pretty big for me because uh, I sometimes have a lot of trouble visualizing what's going on in a battle. And so I thought that it was strong writing for me personally that I could generally always understand what was going on in a fight and visualizing all of that, which is something that goes a long way to me feeling immersed and engaged in a book, which is probably why I felt that so much with this one. And then enjoyment got a nine also just for like all of those reasons put together, really, like everything that I've said about the other categories so far. Um, I just really enjoyed this. So with all of that being said, I'm sort of setting this up as like an elimination style with one group of books at a time. So The Oathsworn Legacy is my so-called winner of the first three books. Um, so I will not be picking Blood of the Stars or The Black Crown as my semi-finalist, but The Oathsworn Legacy is still in the running to be my semi-finalist. And then when I read another three or four books, I will determine what my favorite of that batch is and then and I will kind of put it up against the Oathsworn Legacy and decide whether uh, which of those two I want to like keep as my tentative semi-finalist and then once I finish all 10 I'll obviously actually pick and actually know what my semi-finalist will be but for now um, the Oathsworn Legacy by Kaira Ganji is my front runner for my semi-finalist pick and it's definitely one that I would recommend reading um, if you think that what any of I, what anything I just said was sounding interesting to you, um, you should definitely pick it up. And I'm hoping that, well, I guess I could say I'm hoping that it gets through, but I'll be the one making that decision. But we'll see. So unless something dethrones it, um, this could very well be my semi-finalist. So that is it for this video. That is my review of 
all three of the books that I've read so far. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Please like if you liked this video. Comment down below if you want to talk about these books. I would love to hear from you. Um, and yeah, subscribe if you would like to see more content from me. And as always, I'll have my socials and Discord linked in the description if you're interested in any of that stuff. And I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. Bye!